And that, welcome to this video in which we're going to focus on three things. One is to reinforce your major scales again, but I'm going to come at it from a different angle this time. The first five notes and then the last two notes. It's a bit of a challenge on the major scale front. Uh, second thing is going to be some finger independence exercises and you can personalize those how you want. I'll give you some ideas. Thirdly, and kind of the main point of the video is dynamics, touch. Um, some people have a problem with sounding quite uneven and other people have a problem with just sounding very even with no dynamics. So I'd like to give you a very simple kind of idea for you to play around with as always to um, personalize it. Uh, but the general idea is going to help you to refine your touch and I'll maybe give one or two examples of how that can be applied when you're actually playing a, a piece of music. Uh, so there you guys always like to comment subscriptions are welcome have a look at my video magic website water pianism syllabus all the links are below so um the first thing is recently i've done some videos where we're just focusing on the first five notes of the major scale but that's more of a kind of a left hand thing uh link to those videos there's three of them only 10 minutes long um just something to play as a beginner so you might find those useful but here what i've decided to do is to only let you worry about the first five notes of each of the 12 major scales i'll use different keys in this and um, the first thing is that you're going to, so I'll focus first of all on drilling the major scale part, but I'll apply some dynamics to it. So the idea is that you're going to first of all take the first two notes, and then three, and then four, and then all five of major scales. Now you can do it chromatically, all the keys chromatically, or, and I kind of recommend this a bit more, go around the cycle of fourths and start like that, meaning you just count up a fourth in the major scale that you're in and play its major scale, and then the, f or the first few notes, and then the fourth its major scale, or the first few notes. So I'll start on C as always, and uh, I'll give you that example. So let's just say we're going to start with two, and I'll do it maybe with my left hand, and uh, let's say the two weak fingers for most people are the little finger and the ring finger, so I'll demonstrate with those two, and we'll start either down here, where it would normally play. There's, no, there's not, not, not too much point putting the left hand all the way up here, when it's rarely going to ever go up there. Uh, so we're going to go down here, and you're only going to play the first two notes. So I'll talk about dynamics after. First of all, just know that you're playing the first two notes. Try to be steady, and just do it a couple of times. When you, when you, but I would like you to, with your eyes, to see the rest of the scale if you can, and even while you're sort of trying to work it out. This is a good example of separating your conscious mind from just your subconscious playing. Uh, let let this go on as your eyes try to work out the other notes. See, I'm still doing this, I'm talking, I'm looking about. I'm looking at other scales and whatnot. We're going to go to the key of F next and B flat, B flat, A flat. But you see, my left hand is just on autopilot. It's orientated in the key of C, or oriented, my American friends. Uh, next key, F, I'll use the same two fingers. But again, I'm doing this. It might seem um, trivial, but it's not. This is very much important. I'm getting a bit of a finger workout, but I'm playing the first two notes, and I can see the rest of the scale. And that's very important. I got to B flat. Natural touch. Don't be too loud or too soft. We'll add that afterwards. E flat. And what you want to do is actually try and do this as quickly as you can. So while you're doing it, maybe try and find the fourth as well. So it's A flat. And I can see the first two notes of A flat while I'm still playing E flat. Now I can see the fourth is D flat. So later I'm going to play D flat and E flat. But notice how my left hand is not stopping. I'm not. My talking, my thinking is not distracting the actual playing. So now I'm going to go to, uh, where am I? I forgot what key I'm in, D flat, right. And then we're going to go to G flat. So the idea is to do that as quickly as you can until you can only maybe only, you only have to play it twice maybe. Because B flat is in my head, E flat's in my, A flat's in my head. Like it's so quick I can't even say it. B is there, E is there, A is there, D is there, G is there, C is there. See if you can get to that kind of speed. So I've given my two little fingers a nice workout. This time we'll do it with three, but I'll do it with the right hand. So let's just say the middle three fingers. It could be any three fingers. I'll just say the middle three, and I'm going to do th the first three notes with the same kind of logic. Maybe it might be nicer to go down this time because we've got a few more notes instead of just going up all the time. I suppose you can do it that way or go down. Your choice, personalize. Even sound. And again, when you can see the rest of the scale, that's good with your eyes. When you can see where the fourth is, because that's what we're going to go up to next, jump to it. C B flat. And if I just speed up, I'll, go, I'll just jump through them. E flat, A flat, D flat. And I can see, see I'm thinking ahead, that's the important thing. 
and also notice how they're all quite even. I'm, I'm sort of playing each note with the same um, power. So that's that. And then you'll do it, I won't do it all, but you'll do it with four fingers, and then you'll do it with all five, exactly the same as what I've said. Do it each hand individually, both hands together. I'll just do a few examples of both hands together. Let's say the, the rightmost fingers on my left hand and the lowermost fingers on my right hand. And just do it until it feels really comfortable. You see on my left hand, I need to just roll my, my arm forward a bit so my thumb can reach the B flat. That's fine. B flat. Etc. 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 But try and see that you're doing it within the key that you're actually in. Now the interesting thing is now I'm gonna I can lead you on to the dynamics part and then I'll talk about the last two notes, notes six and seven of the major scale. Then I'll give you a bit of a demonstration of why dynamics is important. Um, uh, the dynamics can actually be demonstrated when you're doing it with more than three notes. You can do it with two notes, uh, but I'll just demonstrate it with three. The idea is you want to find the extremes. So you want to be able to play as soft and as quietly as you can, but quite a lot. Just so that you can like uh, experience what that extreme feels like. So the idea is that you're going to play that extreme quietly. Then you're going to play quite hard as an extreme. And then you're going to find the middle ground. And having those two posts with that middle point really does help. And then you can more easily slide up and down it. So I'll do three. I'll, I'll use maybe these, th these three fingers on my left, in, um, middle index thumb middle index thumb, excuse me, and uh, maybe on the right hand I'll use uh, the ring, no, the middle ring and little finger. I hate n numbering fingers, I don't know why. So, you want to do this with all different finger combinations. You want this to be hours and hours, accumulated hours and hours over days and days and weeks of doing this. Then you'll have a really great touch after a couple of weeks. Uh, so those fingers, as I just said. So first of all, you're going to play them really quietly in any key. Let me do it in the key of E flat my favorite key. So, E flat, F and G. Now this is a bit difficult because we have a digital connection to the computer, but when you're actually doing it yourself, you'll hear it a lot more if you have a real piano, that's obviously much better. But I'm playing these as lightly as I can um, to actually get a signal to the computer. But I'm really playing them lightly. But what you want to do, this is the interesting thing, close your eyes because you don't need your eyes. You want to put your mind, your consciousness, into your fingertips, into each finger, as if it's like um, becoming each finger. It's hard to explain it, but when I'm playing with the middle fingers here, I've, I feel like I'm in that finger, and it's just switching, then it's going to the uh, index on the left, ring on the right, thumb on the left, little finger on the right, and I'm just experiencing what it's like to play that softly. Doesn't matter what key you're doing this in. And again, we can do it with four notes, doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm at the extreme of the gentle touch. Now I'm going to go to the other extreme. I'll stay in the same place. No, I'll go to another key, actually. Let's go to the key of G. Same fingers, G, A, and B. But this time I'm going to play them as hard as I can. But notice that even though I'm playing quite hard, I'm not bashing, I'm not playing from my elbows. I'm not even playing from my wrists. I'm still playing from the fingertips. Piano keys are very, very light. I forget what it is, but if you do a bit of research, you can find it's like four or five grams for a note. That's how much weight is required to press a piano note. So when you're playing it really hard, the actual force behind that finger power is, is just a couple of grams. So you don't need your whole elbow, which can carry you know a 50 kilogram bag or something. Your fingers are very strong. And even to play heavy on the piano, it only requires like five or 10% of your actual power in your fingers. So I'm actually playing as hard as my piano will allow me to play. And yet you can kind of see in the video that there's still not any tension. I'm not, I'm not like, bang, you can't see my arms up and down. It's only still my fingers. Now let me just alternate between the two as if you're having an eye test. And it's like, you know, I, what is it like, you know, lens number one or lens number two. Let me just do the soft to the extreme. And uh, then I'm going to find the middle ground. And you'll want to do this so you can physically experience it. I can only speak it. Maybe a couple of repetitions. Hard. And again, I'm kind of consciously in my fingers. And it feels nice. It feels like I'm in control. It's great. Now, 
try and find the middle ground. So do the lowest and the highest and then a middle one. And then I've got a, a nice little fun thing to do, which requires a bit of, people like brain breaking exercises. This is going to be one. So quietly. Notice I'm also not changing tempo. Being quieter doesn't mean playing more slowly. And playing loud doesn't mean playing more, more quickly. So softly. Let me go to another key because that gets boring. Let's do the key of E here. E, F sharp, G sharp. Same, same three fingers. So quietly. Loud. And then in the middle. So I'm kind of setting, it's like I'm setting the parameters in, in, to speak technically. I'm setting the lowest level. I'm setting the highest level. I'm acknowledging how that feels in my fingers, and then I'm going to the middle. But the tempo doesn't change. So that will tune your fingers, excuse the pun, to knowing what extremes to play within, and that's quite useful. Um, now, the fun thing is, let me just go to a different key, the key of B, and I'll use uh, four notes this time. The let's do five. So just use thumb to little finger in the key of B. Okay, so what you're going to do now is choose one note and make it louder than all the rest, but with the extremes. So play really quietly. Let's say B, C sharp, D sharp. Maybe E is going to be the loud note. And then F sharp is back to normal. E is the loud note. It should be coming out pretty well because I'm trying to act. I'm really trying to do it clearly so that you can really hear the difference. Quite, like, quite, quite, quite loud, quite loud. So even when they're next to each other, it's E is loud, F sharp is quiet, E is loud. So it's they're right next to each other, and yet I'm not playing. I'm not playing E and F sharp loud. I'm only playing the E loud. So let's do, let's do another note. Let's let's just do one other note, like C sharp. see the idea now try two so let's do that C sharp and E loud but the others quiet you see how that's actually happening I can't really explain it there's a consciousness I think it's because my fingers are so fine-tuned as I'd like yours to be of the extreme quiet and extreme loud sounds and it knows the middle and so when I need to play a loud note, I do. And when I need to play a soft note, I do. It's like there's not too much thinking involved. Um, so that's a really fun exercise to do. Now, just going back to the major scale thing, uh, you want to play only six and seven because you've probably done one, two, three, four, five. But now, this is a lot more difficult. You have to play only six and seven, not even the octave, because that's the same as one. So just to make it a bit more challenging, you have to play six and seven. And um, you have to be able to therefore see the key from the beginning. So I'm going to go in the key of C, go around the cycle of fourths. So otherwise, you're cheating. Otherwise, if you just play six and seven, all you need to do is like um, you know, go up chromatically. You know, and that's that's not really that's that's not really you know learning anything. That's just cheating. So going around the cycle of fourths, you have to see six and seven quickly. So in the key of C, it's going to be A and B. Any two fingers, whatever. But I'm seeing that I'm see I'm seeing in my mind's eye and physically that I'm playing six seven six seven, and I can see the key of C all the way down below. I can see all the, all the other notes. So now I'm going to jump up to the key of F, so I can see the key of F with my eyes. Even if I close my eyes, it's on my internal piano. I see it, and I can see that six and seven is D and E. So now I'm playing D and E, which looks like two and three in the key of C, but it's not. It's six and seven in the key of F. This is note value awareness, and the sooner you can master this, the better your playing w will be. Very super power, superior skill to have. So now I'm, I'm going to go up to the key of B flat because it's the fourth up from F, and I can see f uh, six and seven is G and A. And I'm, s I'm playing G and A, not as the second and third of F, not as the five and six of the key of C, not as anything else. It could even be four and five of the key of D. It could be one and two of the key of G. But I'm playing it, no, as uh, 6 and 7 of B flat. 6, 7. So that's the thing that you want to do, playing the last two notes. Of course, you can play the last three notes or the last four notes, do it, but I think it's quite 
a challenge to play only six and seven and only move when you can see the next six and seven of the next key. That will really help to reinforce the, master, the uh, major scales. So I think that's it really. You are getting a good uh, workout for the major scales. You're getting a nice fingering exercise, different finger combinations, uh, and you're really focusing on your dynamics, the extreme of loudness, the extreme of softness, finding something in the middle. And I don't know, if I just give you an example of like uh, Liebestraum by Franz Liszt, a favorite piece of mine, kind of play it in a different way every time. Uh, but if I sort of highlight, if you just focus not so much on what I'm playing, but how some notes are louder and softer. I'll try and speak as I'm doing it occasionally. Um, but like the first note's going to be quiet, and then it's a bit louder. And then the A flat down there is soft. This is middle C. I'll be the key of A flat. I'm playing that one. So you see, even the first three notes, it's kind of the most, it's very quiet. So I know how much to, pr to press it. C is like in the middle. And then the A flat down there is really soft. So. Well, that's a bit, a bit more soft that time. It's different every time, see? See, that was hard. Now it's soft. And that one's, that one's louder. Loud. Soft. Even when I'm doing that, I'm going soft, 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 loud. So maybe you can actually do this technical exercise not just with the major scales. I mean, I, I wanted to emphasize the major scales because they're so important, but you can do it with chords as well. So that was a nice A-flat rolling arpeggio, broken chord, open chord. And I'm playing the C louder, which is nice. So... See how the, I'm, I'm doing this suspended chord louder than I'm playing the left hand. See, that was quite loud. Louder. Soft. quite a pretty piece but can you see how the dynamics are changing and that's only because I used to do these technical exercises myself S just highlighting one loud note and like I said I just realized you can do it in chords as well so that's C major 7 C E G B but I'm only highlighting the G as a loud note in both hands so uh, if you can combine that with, you know, knowing what it feels like to play as lightly as possible, knowing what it feels like to play as hard as possible, which is only with the fingers, it's not with the whole arm. And you can, of course, go up that gradient. Uh, I hope it comes through digitally, but uh, you'll, you'll, when you do it, you'll see what I mean. Um, and that is it. And th you can't, you don't necessarily directly apply this. This is something that you just realize that you have. It's like trying to play quickly. You don't learn to play quickly by practicing to play quickly. You learn to play quickly indirectly by knowing exactly how to play slowly. And then somehow all the speed naturally is acquired. It's a passive indirect thing, which is an important bit of wisdom. Uh, so there you go. Hopefully that video has been of use to you. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions are welcome. Have a look at my uh, video management website and water pianism syllabus where you can learn all of this. And I'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye for now.